hello and welcome to my channel thank you so much for joining me I hope you love these videos now I'm going to show you lots of techniques if you get anything from them or you have any questions please do comment below I'd also love it if you hit the subscribe button too so you can see more of videos like this everything I've used in today's video I have linked down in the description so you can find where to shop for them now let's get started Today I'm going to talk you through some of the techniques that you can do with the new Creative Craft Products Media Plate. Now this uh, rubber plate has been created to go into most stamping platforms. As long as you have an A5 base, this should fit in because the thickness of it is the same as your rubber stamps, but it's a smooth surface for you to do lots of mixed media techniques on. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do a very simple textured background with this. So just popping some paper into my Creative Craft Products stamping platform, which I absolutely recommend for using in conjunction with your media plate, although they will, it will go into previous stamping platforms that you have. I'm just going to make sure that my paper, I don't need my um, magnets there, but they do come with the platform. Just make sure that my paper is in the right place for the platform there. And the first thing we're going to do is just apply some ink to this. Now you can just do all of one color because you'll get lots of texture in there anyway, or you can go with multiple colors. So I'm going to go with um, some pink and then also some turquoise. Now the benefit of this is if you were to try and do an ink blended background using say your blending brushes, you'd get a lovely smooth application. It would use an awful lot of ink though, and it does take a long time to do. Now if you want a little more texture in your prints for example this is the way to go just a tip for you I do have a piece of A4 paper here just to clean off my brayer between each um, blending of the ink here to make sure that I'm not mixing the pink and blue too much so I've just gone with my brayer there and just making sure that I've got a nice thin application of ink this is always really good to keep to the side as well because you often get some really interesting patterns on your scrap piece of paper now I've gone over the pink in the same way and I'm just going to blend into that blue ever so slightly. So now I can just transfer that onto my paper as it is. As I press that down, all that lovely ink is going to transfer onto the paper and give me a really beautiful textured look. Now if I peel off my paper, you can see it's really pretty. That is absolutely perfect for backgrounds, for scrapbooking, for journaling or for your cards but we've still got some ink left on the media plate here. So I'm just going to pop another piece of paper in there. And because I've used water-based inks, and I would always recommend using water-based inks, never use solvent inks on your media plate because they will stain, you just won't get the marks off, and that won't print onto the paper either. I'm going to do a light spritz of water, plain water, onto the media plate there. And this is just going to help remove that remaining ink onto your paper. Press it down using the stamping platform so you get a nice even application there. Lift off and you have more of a watercolour look. If we compare the two, you can see you've got stronger colours on the first, but you still have quite a bit of ink, but with lovely watercolour splodges on the last one there. The next thing I want to do is layer up some images on here. So I'm going to put my uh, piece of paper back in there. I'm just going to line that up with my media plate around so it doesn't need to be exact and we can now do some stamping techniques onto here and we can use background stamps for this I've got a really lovely lacy effect stamp here this is from a textures range and I might go in with a turquoise blue but the beauty of this is we can now start playing around with our textures and our colors onto our media plate and then transfer when we're happy with everything rather than going directly onto the paper. So I'm going to add some prints on here like so. And then I'm going to do the same with the pink as well. Just applying all the pink ink to the other side and I'm going to overlay the pink onto the blue side there. So just pressing this down. I'm not using a platform or an acrylic block to press this down because I want quite some um, rough edges here. And with all that lovely texture, I'm going to then transfer that over to here. 
Now pressing that down and I've got a beautiful kind of damask pattern going on. Now I can peel this up, but to make sure I've got a nice firm application, I'm just going to give that an extra rub, lift that up and we've got all of that beautiful texture transferred onto our print. And we can keep going with that. Now, over on my media plate right now, I've actually got some excess ink sitting there. It's a beautiful pattern. The last thing I want to do is completely lose that. So what I'm going to do is just take another sheet of cardstock or paper, pop that in there, a very light spritz of ink, being that these are water-based inks, flip that over. And again, just as we did with the full background, just make sure that mops up all of that lovely excess ink off of the paper to transfer that print. Isn't that beautiful? So that's more subtle we've got our watercolour effect, we've got our stronger backgrounds and prints, and we've got our light one, all from one media plate, all from one print. And even as I look at this, there's a little bit of print left there that I can reinvigorate with some water, transfer again. It will be ever so pale, but it might be just the amount of texture you're looking for. If you sometimes wish some of your stamps were flipped the other way around, so for this one, the Father Christmas was waving his other hand. You can do this with the media plate. It's kiss stamping technique. It's really easy to do, but I've got some top tips to make it even easier and a better, clearer image. So what I like to do is, first of all, I've just stamped the image so you can see what it's like the first time round. Take your stamp and just place it, the stamping side up, so rather than on the paper, the flat side is on the paper, Place it the way that, or the position that you would like it to stamp in. Pop your media plate into your stamping platform. And this tip just helps the ink transfer back onto the paper afterwards. And that's using a clear embossing ink underneath. So you won't see this on your final project. It will just help release that ink back onto the paper when you're done. So cover the part of the platform that you're going to be using with the clear ink and it doesn't matter the brand i'm using versamark but you can use any clear ink and then go on to your stamp with your normal black stamping ink so just giving it a really good covering of ink there probably more than you'd usually use because bear in mind you're transferring this and then we're just going to go over we're going to press into the media plate onto the stamp there press it down really hard making sure you're transferring all that ink over lift that up you can see your stamp is on the media plate now bring this back over and press it down now what I usually like to do with this technique is to just remove my magnets and to allow the paper to lift up and over so I can give it a really good rub underneath transferring all of that ink absolutely perfectly you can use your brayer as well if you want to for a nice even application peel your paper off and you'll have your reversed image stamped there and of course you can position this anywhere you want to so let's use the media plate to create one last really fun background with lots of layers i'm going to add blue ink these are distress oxides some black or rather brown ink in my colors <laughs> Um, and then some grey as well, just in the centres there. Then I'm going to use my brayer and I'm just going to mix these colours together. I'm not worried about how they blend, you've got a nice mix of blues and browns in there. The grey is kind of almost a base, so it's just a nice mixer for them all. Then I'm going to go in with my lace stamp and I'm actually going to use this to lift off areas of the ink. So if you press it down hard into the stamp, it's going to lift off parts of the ink. You can see them on there. And the same here. Now these bits will show up more white on your stamped image. And then I'm going to use my black ink. This is a distress ink rather than an oxide. I'm just going to press this down in a few places to apply some black print as well. And just a bit down here. Now, if I transfer that over onto a piece of paper or cardstock, I'm not going to use my magnets this time. I'm going to place this over and I'm going to allow that to lift up the paper. I'm going to use the black back of my brayer, although it's a little bit inky. I'm just going to clean it off a little bit. 
and I'm going to hold this really still on the paper. I'm going to lift off as much ink as possible. If you don't have a brayer, we do have them available on Craft Stash under the Textures brand, or you can just use your hand, but a brayer gives you a much more even application. Okay, and then we can lift that off and we can reveal our beautiful layered and textured background.